All right, hello and welcome back. Hopefully we sound a little smoother, a little, a little deeper maybe with the new microphone. Uh, I got a little collar mic here. Um, pretty cheap, but uh, Amazon came through. Works beautifully um, and uh, I think it's a lot easier. Then of course having the uh, the headset on um, and of course the mic quality is better than my webcam. But appreciate you tuning in. So we've got, oh Lord, week eight um, under wraps here. It was a busy one. Uh, I had a bunch of earnings last week, so um, got a little busy, but it's all for the good. We had a nice pro profitable week, and um, let's get into it. So as you can see here, we had about almost 70 orders last year, like I said. Uh, I think we had uh, 22 earnings trades in one day, um, so things got a little hairy, but uh, luckily all for the good. Didn't really have any mistakes this week, which I think is pretty good. Um, always a good thing and then of course we're profitable so um, we're gonna start off with I talked about last week about the uh, applied materials um, snafu pin risk situation where we got to sign some shares over the weekend uh, got lucky and that these dropped in value because we were short 200 shares so definitely glad that that's that closing out position there we also had our Zillow position close. This was one we did um, as a uh, kind of a revenge trade, you could call it, but earnings didn't go well. It fell pretty, uh, or sorry, shot up through the roof. And so um, when they're exaggerated moves like that, we like to sell um, positions against it, expecting them to kind of fall back down into a normal range, which Zillow did nicely. Um, we held that one for a short amount of time and uh, got our profit target. So, and again, one of those beautiful ones, we set it up all but forgot about it and it closed on its own for a nice couple hundred dollar win so um royal caribbean earnings trade uh let's see here cree was another one that we closed out this one moved pretty far in its own earnings a couple weeks ago uh, about two weeks ago and so we sold out it came uh crashing back down into the normal range if you will oh, let's see here there we go bam um and uh again said it and forgot it made a nice little profit on that same with pen gaming Close out Royal Caribbean the next day for a small loss because uh, it took off for whatever reason. Missed earnings, missed sales. I don't know. What happened? It happens, it happens. Um, so obviously last week was uh, the market started to drop a little bit. Um, so we did a little bit of rolling or maintenance uh, on the portfolio. So anything that was being tested on the put side but wasn't quite in the money or wasn't. So um, being tested meaning so on this... Um, Cognizant here, we were being tested. Our short put was a 73. Cognizant was getting very close or testing the 73 limit or, or level. And so when that happens, you, you can either close out the position or you can usually that's the last time you can still roll a position for a credit. And anytime we roll, we always want to get paid to roll. And rolling just means giving ourselves more time. So as you see here, originally this position was going to expire on the 12th of March. We rolled out about another two weeks to April 1st, and we got about a $6 credit. So nothing crazy, but we did get paid in order to extend the time that we have. Because again, uh, markets are fickle, of course, and you know this kind of down move kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I expect it to be a short-lived situation, so giving ourselves more time, letting Cognizant and all these other positions have time to rally back above or fall below, depending if it was a call or put. Um, so Cognizant, same with Occam, Cirrus, those are all rolling for um, credits, same with XBI. Um, this one actually we got to roll, it was quite a bit against us um, because XBI just, just took off. And so because of the drop in the market, we were able to roll this out for a little bit more time, actually almost a whole other month for a small credit. So it didn't quite fall down far enough to get out for a profit. So all we did was just give ourselves more time, get paid to do it. So always good stuff. Uh, John Deere, this one we sold um, because they had earnings week before. Um, they blew it out of the water. So we're expecting them to drop um, in price over the next couple weeks and uh, make some of that money that we lost back. QCOM, rolling maintenance position, same with Lowe's. Um, actually, no, Lowe's, this was an earnings play. Same with Square, Sage, Overstock. Um, those are all earnings plays. Closed out lows for a nice win. 
Um, Sage Therapeutics, also for a little win. The Sage is a little, a little dicey. Um, not a lot of activity at all in aftermarket or pre-market. And so, um, and it was pretty much, it looked like it was gonna open right about our middle price, our 80s here. And um, it did, but it started to really spike up and down. So we got out just pretty much whatever I could get. Luckily it was just below our credit of 588. So we made a little $50 profit there. Nothing crazy, but always better than a loss. Square, unfortunately I had to pay a little bit more. It started getting a little squirrely on us. It did eventually come down for, would have hit our profit target, but that was several hours later. And, uh, and I don't deal with that uh, anxiety situation. So um, kept the loss small, get out. Save our sanity. Always what we want to do. Um, Home Depot closed. This is a long-term trade uh, that we just had on from before. Uh, so again, a set it and forget it thing. And then Overstock, we had a little win there. Nothing crazy. 895 got an 870. Um, but that one is getting a little squirrely. Apparently, he's got some subpoenas and some legal stuff going on from 2019. And uh, the market doesn't like government getting involved. So uh, we got out, luckily, for a small win there. Uh, this was the 24th, which was Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, so we're on to Wednesday now. A uh, bunch of earnings um, and a little bit of maintenance. So IFF, we had some maintenance. We rolled that um, out for a little more time because, again, it was uh, reaching our 145, 150 number. <clears throat> and then we had earnings. Teladoc, Tandem, Best Buy, Natiz, Papa John's Pizza, NVIDIA, DPZ, Domino's Pizza and Wayfair. Now, I want you guys to know that I don't normally know all the names of the companies. Um, but because I refuse to say like Nidzis and Nvidia, like I'm just, I'm learning a little bit more about the company, just that much more than I typically would um, to, for commentary for you guys. Um, this, for the most part, this is a pretty good day. So Teladoc, uh, we got out for a little win. Natiz, we got out for a little win. Best Buy, I believe we lost on. Yeah, Best Buy um, just kind of fell, and I don't feel that it's going to return. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that their online business is big enough, but I did still sell puts, uh, again, in our revenge tactic to try to make some of the money back, so you'll see that coming up here. <coughs> um, so we'll see. We'll see if that just kind of plays out nicely in the return to mean uh, the normalization is uh, is stronger than uh, the overall business, at least my thoughts on the overall business um, plan. Tandem, decent money, I think. Yeah, 550, got out of five. Wayfair, nice win. I uh, had an iron condor on. So you'll notice that some of these are quite a bit different, um, right? So in this case, we had an iron condor on the tees. We got 548 and we had an iron condor on Wayfair for $1.50. So this is to keep um, within my risk parameters. This on the tees is technically an iron fly. You'll see the same strike, 117 on the call and the put. And that's just because we get a lot more credit for those. And the max loss is still under our $500 limit because the expected move of the tees and the credit received allowed us to stay within our $500 limit. On Wayfair, the expected move was 30 or 40 points. So even with a big credit coming in of about, I think it was like 2,200 or 22, um, that's still an $1,800 potential max loss. It's well above our max loss limit right now. And so what we did is we just widened it way out, right? So Ironfly is usually right on the money, stacked up. We get all that credit for at the money, lots of credit. Um, well, with an iron condor, when we need to, we can spread it way out. So we have a range this big. And because we do that, we can stick to our $500 max loss. That's why it's a five point spread between these two numbers. And then um, we can get out. So it's a way, you know, not as much credit, so not as much fun. Um, but there's usually a much higher probability of being correct because we have a wider range. And. Um, it allows us to stick within our risk metric. That's the biggest difference there. So you'll see that quite a bit here. Um, and then of course had a bunch on Thursday. That was the big day. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, 13 uh, earnings just on that day alone. So um, that was definitely a pretty good winning day too. VMware did pretty well, if I remember right. 
Uh, and most of our iron condors, our small guys, close pretty well. Um, yeah, dash. Dash is pretty good, actually. Dash, actually, we put for, uh, I think, 11, and it filled at like 1045, 1050. So when that gaps, like, it just means uh, when we get that good of a fill adjustment in our favor, um, I think it just means we nailed it. Uh, now, obviously, waiting a little bit longer, another, I think it was like 15 minutes on dash, we could have made, could have gotten out for like seven or eight, so another two, three hundred bucks. Um, not that big of a difference. I don't know that I necessarily would have stayed. We already made two, three hundred bucks. Um, and, and the technicals just didn't look ideal uh, to continue holding. So I'm happy with that. Um, but of course, you know, you can always make more. And, and really that can add up over time, right? You know, that's a one trade. We made 70 trades this week. If you made another 25 bucks on, you know, 5,000 trades a year. Just saying, just saying. <clears throat> So, uh, we'll skip through most of these. I find the close DPC, that was a bit of a mistake. So it was hovering right around our, our shorts uh, at 340 for the put side. Um, but it was holding there pretty firm. So I got out early just to keep the loss small. We only had about a $100 loss here instead of a max loss of uh, four or 500. Um, so, but of course it ends up closing at the end of the week uh, above this, so it would have been a max profit. What can you do? Um, same, uh, I, I thought the same was gonna happen with Papa John's Pizza, uh, but it did not, of course. So that one I did hold, which I should have done on the Domino's, um, and probably sold out of Papa John's earlier. Um, but, uh, oh well, can't be, can't be perfect, don't have a crystal ball. Um, the rest of our Iron Condors, pretty much, you know, we're gonna have 35 cents. We sold them usually for $1.40, $1.50. Um, so nice little win, again, not a lot, it's a hundred bucks, but it does add up um, for sure. And again, if we're trying to basically just cover our nut of a hundred dollar, two hundred dollars a week um, for our income, and ideally anything above that is just gravy on top, trying to make back the losses as well as grow the account. Uh, those little hundred dollar winners are, uh, are bangers for sure. And then um, we went back and looked at the earnings to see if any of them had really exaggerated moves still a day later, um, see if we can capitalize on that, on that. And of course, Best Buy, Natease, NVIDIA, and Teladoc were all way down. So we sold some aggressive uh, put spreads, expecting them to pop back up. So, um, and those of course, since it is Monday, are doing quite well since Monday uh, and Friday even was um, a bit of an up day. So these are all looking pretty good. So, um, and then we're gonna flip over to the P and L, because I know that's probably everybody's favorite. Uh, there we go. So for the week, 22 to the 27th, $1,400, right? Um, progress is what that is. 72% win rate, um, 260 transactions. I think this is calculating when I, because each earnings piece is at technically four option contracts. So if we had 60 transactions, and most of those were two-parters, or four-parters, excuse me, right, 60 times that. I'm thinking that's where that's coming from, not 100% sure. 32 different um, symbols. And most of this was from, so these are fun too. So the Iron Condors, unfortunately, those little guys uh, didn't work out entirely well just because I had some losers so you're taking a bunch of small wins, but then you got two or three uh, max losses on those. That's why I don't like to do those. It's kind of how the Iron Fly came about, because um, they just seem to work better and you get more premium. So in case things go bad, you can usually make it out. And then vertical shorts. So these were some of the uh, revenge um, exaggerated earnings moves that were closing out, right? So 900 made, about 1,000 made, 950 made off um, the earnings, and then the rest was made off of the longer term, 30, 45 days. Um, premium selling so uh, I think that's it uh, lastly I guess we'll show you just how we're doing for the year I wish they still had the little plus signs um, so down 3186 uh, sucks for sure but quite a bit better than this 42 number so making progress um, that's it for this week um, do look out for 
some videos. Um, I'm working on one about in the money, out of the money, at the money, help you explain that, get some visuals on that. And then there's a ton of just short, simple ones that I want to do on some of the definitions and the terminology that I'm using. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. And I think it might just end up being Matt rambling in front of a computer and maybe trying to figure out how to edit some slides to uh, get some visuals in there. But we'll see. Uh, love you guys. Love your feedback and comments and uh, have a good day.